We're not going to have a lot of warning if a final um, big eruption starts. Remember Pompeii? We might just be on the brink of something similar. This may seem like a doomsday prophecy, but with Lake Toba's history and potential, another supervolcanic eruption may yet be in the works. Volcanic eruptions are one of the least occurring but deadliest natural disasters man has witnessed. They have severe consequences, not just on the surrounding environment, but on the living organisms that make up that environment. Apart from their tendency to overflow and annihilate everything in the way, volcanic ash also contains toxins harmful to the climate. If history repeats itself, will the human race be capable of surviving the effects of such a massive eruption? In this video, we'll discuss the alarming implications of the Lake Toba eruptions. But before we go into that, let's talk about some of the biggest eruptions ever known to man. Number 1. The Legendary Mount Vesuvius Eruption This is the first recorded volcanic eruption in history. On the 24th of August, 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius released torrents of toxic gas and volcanic debris. Due to this, about 2,000 people died of asphyxiation in the small city of Pompeii. The volcanic ash that the volcano released was so deadly that it buried the whole city underneath it in a short time. In 1748, archaeologists discovered the entombed and perfectly preserved city. The city is so well preserved that the graffiti on the walls remains intact. There were even burnt loaves of bread left in some of the ovens. Number 2. The Yasser Volcano, Vanuatu This one is a rather special case. This volcano first started erupting in the year 1774. The glow of the volcano attracted Captain James Cook on the first European journey to the island in 1774. Captain Cook and most likely his crew were the first to witness this amazing oddity. Unlike most, which lasts for a few weeks to a couple of months, this one has been constantly erupting since 1774. That's an astounding 249 years. This is the longest eruption in the history of the world and has become more or less a tourist attraction and visitors can still view the smoky displays of this volcano. Number 3. The Mount Tambora Volcano Next, we have the deadliest volcanic eruption ever. In 1815, Mount Tambora in Indonesia erupted with such epic magnitude that it killed about 10,000 people in the first couple of minutes after erupting. That was only the beginning of a devastating change of events. Next, the mountain spewed toxic gas and ash that had a widespread global effect. The gases lifted above the clouds and settled there, causing a thick smog that blocked out the sun for months. This resulted in rapid global cooling that led to widespread famine and what locals remember as a year without summer. About 1 million people worldwide were estimated to have died due to the effects of this particular disaster. Number 4. Nevado del Ruiz Finally, we have one of the most devastating volcanic eruptions in recent times. Colombia's Nevado del Ruiz volcanic eruption in 1985 was relatively mild, but it caused some destruction of epic proportions. Nevado translates to topped with snow, and this glacial peak proved to be most disastrous for the region. The series of lava flows from the volcano melted the ice-capped mountaintop. Within hours, fatal mudslides of rock and volcanic debris raced through the neighboring structures and settlements. Armeto, a close-by town, suffered the most under the onslaught of mud and debris, with almost half of its population confirmed dead. The Nevado del Ruiz eruption raked up great financial costs considering the massive destruction of property and the limitation of travel and trade. The World Economic Forum estimates that the Nevado del Ruiz eruption cost the economy around $1 billion. This makes Nevado del Ruiz the most expensive volcanic incident recorded in history, outraking even the famous 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in the USA, costing about $860 million. Now that we have that covered, we can now go into what most likely to be the biggest eruption the world has ever seen. Lake Toba, also known as Danau Toba, is a natural lake located in North Sumatra, Indonesia. It sits within a caldera formed by a supervolcanic eruption, making it the largest volcanic lake in the world. The lake is 62 miles long and about 30 kilometers wide with a surface elevation of about 900 meters. It reaches a depth of up to 505 meters. At least four cones, stratovolcanoes, and three cones are visible just above it. The Tanduk Banua cone on the western edge has only sparse vegetation and limited life on it. 
This betrays its young age of barely a couple of hundred years old, as sparse flora and fauna are symbolic of a volcano that recently erupted. The indigenous people of Lake Toba are called the Batoks. The traditional Batok houses are characterized by their colorful decor and their distinctive roofs, which curve upwards on both ends. The lake's floor is made up of varying photoplankton emerged in floating macrophytes and submerged macrophytes. The surrounding countryside is mostly rainforest. This encompasses areas of Sumatran tropical pine forests on the higher mountainsides. The fauna of Lake Toba includes several species of zooplankton and benthic animals. Since the lake is largely poor in nutrients, the native fish fauna is relatively scarce, and the only endemic is Rasbora tabana. More specifically, the Rasbora tabana are only near endemic since they are also found in some tributary rivers that run into the lake and the Neolichilis theonami, locally known as the Batok fish. The latter species is threatened by deforestation, pollution, changes in water level, and the numerous fish species introduced to the lake. The Topa caldera in North Sumatra is made of four overlapping volcanic craters. These overlapping craters make up the volcanic front. At 100 by 30 kilometers, it is the world's largest quaternary and the fourth and youngest caldera. Scientists predict that another super eruption is likely to happen in the next 600,000 years, though smaller eruptions are likely to happen before then. However, this is not the first time Lake Toba would act up. Scientists believe that sometime between 69,000 to 77,000 years ago, more specifically about 74,000 years ago, a volcanic eruption with the magnitude of a VEI-8 occurred. It was the largest known eruption in the history of the Quaternary, and the last in a series of about four caldera-forming eruptions at this same location. The earlier known caldera was formed about 1.2 million years ago. The resulting collapse formed a caldera that was filled with water, hence Lake Toba was formed. The exact year of the eruption is unknown. However, by the pattern the ash deposits have displayed, scientists deduce that it had occurred during the northern summer. This is because only a monsoon could have pushed the volcanic ash and deposited it in the South China Sea. The eruption was assumed to have lasted a total of two weeks. These two weeks led to a decrease in global temperatures from 3 degrees Celsius to 3.5 Celsius for several years. Different people have debated the effects of the eruption. Rampino himself believed that the eruption of the volcano was not solely responsible for the global cooling that ensued afterwards. They further go on to say that the cooling of the Earth's atmosphere had started long before the eruption. Lane and Zelensky supported Rapino and Self's claims after they conducted their own test and studied the lake core from Africa. They concluded that there had been no volcanic winter after the Toba eruption, and high hydrochloric acid deposits lacked the strength to cause any long-term effects, especially not one as devastating as the global winter. Evidence from studies of some mitochondrial DNA suggests that humans experienced a genetic bottleneck at the time. This bottleneck drastically reduced genetic diversity beyond the expected in comparison to the age of the human species. According to a theory proposed by Stanley H. Ambrose of the University of Illinois in 1998, the effect of the Toba eruption may have decreased the human population to tens of thousands. However, this theory is not widely accepted because the effect of the Toba eruption on animals is yet to be observed. To further refute this claim, paleoanthropology has also suggested that there was no bottleneck. After the last major Toba eruption, about 70,000 years ago, a series of smaller eruptions followed, none with the same devastating effects as the last major Toba eruptions. Some parts of the caldera show uplifts due to partial refilling of the magma chambers. A 2016 study revealed that the Toba supervolcano has a magma chamber that contains a whopping 50,000 cubic kilometers of eruptive magma, about 30 to 50 kilometers underground. By this standard alone, the Toba supervolcano's magma chamber is about five times larger than the magma volume of Lake Superior in North America. It also places Toba above the magma chamber of Yellowstone. Toba is one of, if not the largest resurgent caldera on Earth. Many large earthquakes have been recorded to have occurred around the vicinity of the volcano. The most notable earthquakes were recorded in 1987 along the lake's southern shore. It occurred at a depth of 11 kilometers. Similar earthquakes were also recorded in 1892 1916, and 1920 to 1922. The west coast of Sumatra has had several major earthquakes since 1995. Two of the worst ones were the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake with a 9.1 magnitude and the 2005 Nia Simalu earthquake with a magnitude of 8.7. The epicenters of these earthquakes were barely 300 kilometers from Toba. Is this portending a potential disaster? Interestingly, on June 18, 2018, Lake Toba was a location of a ferry disaster. In this sad event, over 190 people drowned. 
talk about a modern-day retelling of the Titanic. MV Sanarbangun was an irregular operating vessel on the lake that capsized with many passengers on board. The incident caused the death of 190 people and injury to many others. Preliminary reports found the vessel was in operation with irregularities. Overloading the vessel and operating in rough weather conditions were concluded to be the main reasons why the ferry collapsed. One might begin to wonder if there's a deity in these waters that need to be appeased so that these disasters would stop. There is little doubt that one of these supervolcanoes may soon erupt and bring about devastating worldwide effects. The main question is, can humanity handle an explosion of such epidemic proportions? Hopefully, before then, we would have figured out how to move the human populace to Mars. However, we should bear in mind that one of the few things which stands a chance of effortlessly wiping out humanity sits beneath us, waiting, watching, till it's ready to explode.